Hey guys, welcome back. In this video we are talking about Hooke's Law. So Hooke's Law is the relationship between normal stress and normal strain, or members that are behaving elastically. So if you remember from the last video here, we were looking at the stress-strain curve. In this case, it is for a ductile material. Um, and when we're saying uh, the, the material is behaving elastically, we mean in this region here, before we've reached an internal stress here that's equal to the yield stress. And just to recap is uh, if we load if we load a member with a uh, inc slowly increasing amount of tension, we're going to be getting more strain building up in there. And as the strain increases, the internal stresses increase. And as long as we uh, we keep loading with our axial force here, the the strain increases and the stress increases. But if we don't actually pass the uh, the yield stress here, when we start unloading the beam, the stress strain curve kind of goes back down on the exact same path here on this linear section and we return back to zero strain basically so we'll stretch out the member and then when we unload it it completely goes back to its original length. So that's what we mean with elastic behavior and Hooke's law is for members, uh, Hooke's law holds true for members that are experiencing this elastic behavior. So uh, this capital E here is the elastic modulus and it's also called the Young's modulus and it's actually the slope of this straight part of the stress strain curve in the, uh, in the elastic region and uh, for this unit, or for this equation to work out, its units are the same as stress because if you remember, strain here is unitless. So if we have the expression for Hooke's law, which is the normal stress is equal to the elastic modulus times the normal strain, well, we also know that the uh, the normal stress can be written as uh, or is the applied load over the cross-sectional area of a member, and we also do know that the strain, the normal strain is the, the, the displacement, that incremental displacement that we find in the member over the, uh, the initial length of that member. So if we plug these into the original equation here, or into Hooke's Law, we basically get P over A is equal to E, so uh, elastic modulus, times delta over L. And we can rearrange this for delta here, and we'll find that we get this expression for delta where it is uh, equal to PL over AE. And we can now determine the deformation in a member that's subjected to axial loads if we just know a little bit about a little bit of information about it. So let's go ahead and solve this example then. So we need to first calculate the cross-sectional area of this member. So we have A is equal to pi r squared, uh, which is equal to pi times 10 millimeters squared and if you just do that that's equal to 314.16 millimeters squared. Now we have everything we need. We have A, we have P, we have L, and we have E. And E will pretty much always be just be given to you in uh, in an equation and when we're dealing with steel it's often going to be uh, 200 gigapascals. So if we just plug in our equation we can figure out what type of um, how much uh, displacement we're going to be getting uh, or elongation that we're getting in this uh, this rod here that's subjected to this axial load. So if we just plug all these in, P is here is 150 kilonewtons times L, which is 500 millimeters. And uh, down on the bottom we have our area, so we have 314.16 millimeters squared times E here, and this is 200 gigapascals. Now, if you remember from previous videos, so like if we're, if we're trying to calculate this, uh, we're running into some weird units here, but if you remember from some of the previous videos, we determined that gigapascals is actually the same thing as kilonewtons per millimeter squared. So what we can do is we can change this from gigapascals to uh, kilonewtons per millimeter squared. Now when we check these units, these millimeter squareds cancel out, kilonewtons cancel out, and we're left with millimeters. So if we run that calculation, you just get this delta here is equal to 1.19 millimeters. And uh, that's how long this rod, or how much this rod would, uh, would get stretched out if we applied this 150 kilonewton uh, tensile force here.